Hi, welcome back to Element 14 Presents. I'm Katie and in today's episode I'm making a musical project. I play clarinet in a couple of local wind bands. I really enjoy it, it's great fun. Now, one of the bands I play in has a little problem. We've got a really great piece, but partway through the piece, we need a ringing phone. Not a modern style ringing phone, an old fashioned sort of rotary dial ring ring sort of sound. Now we've got a great percussion section, but they just can't make that sound. Playing it on a phone requires you to unlock the phone if it's locked and find the place and play it, at which point the moment's probably gone and they are already playing a lot of different instruments all at the same time, needing too many arms. I came up with an idea that I should try making a sound effect box. So whenever we need a sound effect like that, so this one and for other pieces, we could load up a sound and when they need it, they can just press a button and it will play. I know from being in the band quite often their hands are full. They've got drumsticks or shaky things, tambourines, all sorts of stuff in their hands. So I'm thinking I might put in the option that they can press a button on the device, but also have a foot pedal that they could press to play a selected sound effect. For this piece we need one sound effect but if we had another piece with another one and maybe another piece with another one and we could be playing all those pieces in one evening's show. I'm going to have four sound effects that can be loaded, have an SD card that you can insert um, with the sound effects on that will make it super easy for them to add new sound effects. I want it to have its own built-in speaker so it's all one unit, um, ready to go, plug the power in and you're done. That's the project for today, so let's get started. My parts have arrived. So I've ordered a fairly big enclosure. Now I could have made it as small as possible, as streamlined, but it's easy for stuff to get misplaced when in a band there's a lot of big pieces of percussion and other instruments so I think this size is going to be a good size that you're not going to lose it underneath something underneath a piece of paper. The brains of it is going to be this STM32 F4 discovery board. Now I've picked this because it's got audio out, it's got built-in I2S and it's got a micro SD card reader so I can plug in my SD card and I can plug in an amplifier to the speaker direct on it and I've got quite a lot of GPIO that I can use for push buttons and screens. I've got the Adafruit Stereo 20 watt amplifier so this is going to go between my arm and this which is a outdoor rated uh, speaker so I'm going to be using that for the sound out of the amplifier. I've got my power supply, I've got some nice push button switches and five of these OLED screens so four are going to display the four audio files are on the SD card that you've got as your options for the sound effects and one's going to display the volume level so you'd be able to adjust it. So I've got some connectors and stuff in there but then I've also got an incremental encoder for doing the volume level and I've got this foot switch so they'll be able to trigger the sound effect by pressing on that. So now I've got all this, I'm going to start off by getting to grips with the arm, getting uh, the music file loaded, the titles displayed on the screen, and then hopefully I'll be able to also play 
the sound effect. So that's where I'm starting. But in preparation for playing the sound effect, the Adafruit board is all assembled except for the through hole pieces. I'm going to solder on these screw block terminals and this capacitor that's used for filtering. And then we can get started with the programming. My first step was to um, do it as a little test, write the code, check it's working before I build the whole system. I'm using Visual Studio Code IDE and I've got the STM32 Cube MX for doing all my setup and pin allocations. And then the code, I'm using uh, this Wave Player which was an example for the range of these STM discovery boards for playing a preset file, WAV file. So I've made some changes to this. So my changed file will be uploaded with my code, um, but this just allows me to tell it which file I want rather than it only playing the file that it was predetermined to play for the example and a few other changes just to get it all working. I've got it in here that I can set how many screens I've got plugged in. So at the minute I've got one screen plugged in so this will detect that I've got one pin set up, one screen. The uh, Midas OLED, so in previous projects I've used this screen but with I think mainly Arduinos so I'm using the same code as I had for that I've just changed it so it will work with the STM board uh, so I've got my write command write data and all my initialization so that's for the screen and then in my code I'm mounting the micro SD card reading off so it will look at how many screens I've got and read that many files in order off the SD card. So I can just drop my WAV files onto the SD card and it will just find them automatically and make it easy for updating in the future. It looks at the first character, checks if it's a WAV file, if it's all fine, it will add it to a list of effects that it can play and then down here it uploads that file to the screen so that file is displayed on this screen here so at the minute it's picking up the first file as phone 2 sound effect so I've got my screen plugged in I've got a button plugged in to trigger it so obviously I'll have this duplicated four times in the final project I've connected the audio output out of here onto my amplifier board so I've soldered in the screw block terminals that come with this board because I want to use that for connecting at the minute I'm just using my power supply to supply the 12 volts into there and I've connected my speaker up to here so now we can see in this code that when the button's pressed it will play whatever is lit in zero on my list of sound effects so I'll obviously have this duplicated for more buttons and more positions in the list and when I press this we get phone to sound effect that's working brilliantly I'm really happy with that I it should just expand up to my four screens so next I'm going to have a look at the case because I want to sort of wire all this up inside my box. Hi, I'm David from Element 14 to the Electronics Inside. Join me as I tear down toys, tools, appliances, modern, vintage, classics and even some new releases just to find out what's inside. So for my case, I bought this blank case. I picked this one because it's fairly big. 
Um, the discovery board is quite long, so it's going to need a fairly large case. And then I didn't want to make it too small because I don't want it to be able to go missing too easily. Um, people who've had to store stuff in like a shared community type space probably knows how things can get stuff put on top of or moved and you wouldn't see it so I think this should be a good size to see if it's been put up on a shelf or something. Now so I've got this but I need to make um, holes and apertures for the screens and for the push buttons and the external connections for the, like the DC jack and the speakers and stuff. I also need to make an insert on the inside to hold the discovery board. The discovery board doesn't have any mounting holes it's got rubber feet to raise it off the table but it doesn't have mounting so there are two places here and here where there isn't anything on the board that it's going to get in the way of so I'm going to use these to cable tie it down to a base plate and then this base plate can be screwed inside this box so I need to make that insert I then also need to make my plans for where the apertures and holes are going to be on this top panel and where they're going to go on this back panel piece. I'm going to get started with FreeCAD and we can have a look at this. So here's my FreeCAD design. I started off with the insert and I started with a 3D printable insert but this is going to be too big for our 3D printer and it's going to take quite a long time to print something that is basically just flat. So I then scrapped this idea and went with this insert. So this is a piece of 3mm aluminium sheet uh, with drill holes for mounting points in the corners. I've got my holes for the cable ties to cable tie the discovery board to. I've got holes to hold the Adafruit amplifier and some holes to hold my piece of strip board that's going to have the 5 volt regulator on it. So that's going to be my insert. I've then got my back panel. So this has a Lumberg for going to the speakers and a Lumberg for going to the foot switch and my front panel so this has the apertures for the screen and for the push buttons to select which of the four sound effects and a main button in the middle to activate the selected sound effect so what i tend to do on freecad is i use if i'm going to cut it out i use this which is a4 uh, sticky sheet so it's like a sticky label that's pretty much the whole size of the piece of paper so I can print these out and then I can stick them onto the things I need to drill and I'll be able to make sure I'm in the right place for each of them so here are my designs printed let's get started with the case insert first so my first step is to stick the template onto a piece of sheet metal. Then I used a jigsaw to cut out the outside of the template. Next I used an automatic centre punch to make a hole in the centre of each drill mark to ensure the holes are in the right place and centred. Drill all the holes changing the drill bit to the correct size for each different hole size. Then used a file just to clean any burrs off the edge of the metal and then I could clean the template off the original sheet metal. So now we've seen how I've made the insert, I've got the printouts for the back panel and for the front panel. So I'm going to stick these on to those and make those in the same way as I did before. The only difference is for these screen apertures I'm going to drill holes across it and then I'm going to straighten it out into a rectangle by using uh, my handheld like Dremel rotary tool and a file. So now I've got all my holes drilled in the case, uh, let's get on with assembling it all together. So now this has all been assembled in the case, I've got my four screens, uh, four push buttons for selecting the effects and the main push button for setting off the sound effect. I've got my output to the speaker, 
and a foot pedal input and I've got my 12 volt DC barrel socket and then inside I've got the STM board I've got the Adafruit amplifier and my strip board the screens have got these connectors so I can hook them in the push buttons come up from the inside out and the only button that came in from outside it was the main button which if I then soldered this top panel would be fixed so I've just used these Wago connector blocks to connect in that so I can disconnect it and completely separate these parts if needed but for now that's all put together so let's just finish assembling it Now I can get my speaker, attach that, I've got my foot switch and I've got my 12 volts in so there's it all assembled and ready to go. So as we saw at the end of that when I plugged in the 12 volts the screens all came on and started displaying the sound effects so let's have a look at how it all works. So I could select which sound effect I want using these little buttons and then I can press this big button in the middle and trigger each one. So I've got a like ship's horn a phone, a whistle and an alternative phone as well as uh, those that main button in the middle I've got my foot pedal which triggers the sound effect in the same way and if I change it it triggers the new sound effect So I'm super pleased with how this project's gone. It's come out just like I wanted it to at the start. It's going to be really useful in our band situation. We've got our telephone sound effect and I've also got the ship sound effect for another song and we can change it to whichever sounds we want played in a piece. How about you? Have you got a use for something like this? Are you going to make one in the same way or are you going to change it for your own use? Another thought I had was you could make it and put it on your desk and then have the discrete foot pedal under your table and when someone walks past you can make a uh, sound effect and see what happens, see what the reaction is. Um, but there might be other uses for it. If you can think uh, of any, just let me know. Come over to the Element 14 community at the link below um, and get in touch with me. Tell me what you think of this project. Let me know what you think I should do for future projects. But for now, that's all. So I'll see you next time. Bye. <laughs>